lost in the mm. If he lost my horns, the Spaniards will cut off his head. <laughs> In April 1877, Rizal, who was then merely 16 years old, matriculated in the University of Santo Tomas, taking the course in philosophy and letters. He enrolled in this course for two reasons. First, his father liked it, and second, he was still uncertain as to what career to pursue. Waiting to Father Pablo Ramon, rector of the Ateneo, who had been good to him during student days in that college, asking for advice on the choice of a career. It was during the following term that Rizal, having received the Ateneo rector's advice to study medicine, took up the medical course. Another reason why he chose medicine for a reason was to be able to cure his mother's growing blindness. When Rizal was a freshman medical student at University of Santo Tomas, he experienced his first taste of Spanish brutality.
month of May 1881, Rizal went on a pilgrimage to the town of Pakil, famous shrine of the Virgin Maria de los Dolores. He was accompanied by his sisters. Years later, Rizal mentioned the Pagsanan Falls in his travel diary, where he said that Niagara Falls was the greatest cascades I ever saw, but not so beautiful nor fine as the falls at Los Banyas Pagsanhan. After finishing the fourth year of the medical course in the University of Santo Tomas, Jose Rizal being disgusted with the antiquated method of instruction in this Dominican-owned university and the racial prejudice of Dominican professors against Filipino students, decided to complete his studies in Spain. Rizal spent winters in many temperate countries. The winters of 1886 in Berlin was his darkest winter. During this bleak winter, he lived in poverty because no one arrived from Calamba and he was flat broke. In the midst of his despondency and misery, Rizal received a telegram from Dr. Maximo Viola, who was coming to Berlin. This friend of Rizal was a scion of a rich family of Sigel, Bulacan. When he arrived in Berlin shortly before Christmas Day of 1887, he was shocked to find Rizal living in poverty and deplorably sickly due to lack of proper nourishment. On seeing his talented friend's predicament, 
Viola being looted with ample funds, gladly agreed to finance the printing costs of the Nulli. The Noli Mitangere, unlike many works of fictional literature, was a true story of the Philippine condition during the last decades of Spanish rule. The places, the characters, and the situation really existed. Because of the publication of the Noli Mitangere and the upper at cost among the friars, Rizal was warned by Pashano, but he did not heed the warning. He was determined to return the Philippines, to operate on his mother's eyes, to serve his people who had long been oppressed by Spanish tyrant, to find out for himself how the Noli and his other writings were affecting Filipinos and Spaniards in the Philippines, and inquire while Yuno Rivera remained silent. After his arrival, a storm broke over his novel. One day, Rizal received a letter from Governor General Emilio Terero requesting him to come to Malacanian Palace. the truth, but I never advocate subversive ideas. So, give me a copy of the Nuli. Haunted by powerful enemies, Rizal was forced to leave his country for a second time in February 1888. Times had changed. Rizal, at 27, was an embittered victim of human iniquities and disillusioned dreamer, a frustrated reformer. He went to Hong Kong, Macau, Japan, United States, London, Paris, Bilgen, Brussels. Madrid, Biarritz, Ghent, and Hong Kong. Rizal's homecoming in 1896, the last in his life, 
was his father's return to his beloved native land. He knew he was facing the supreme test, which might mean the sacrifice of his life, but he wasn't afraid. As a matter of fact, he welcomed it. The trial of Rizal was an eloquent proof of Spanish injustice and misrule. More than a farce, it was patently a mistrial. Rizal, a civilian, was tried by military court composed of alien military officers. His case was prejudged. He was considered guilty before the actual trial. The military court meant not to give him justice, but to accuse and condemn him. It accepted all charges and testimonies against him, and ignored all arguments and proof in his favor. Moreover, Rizal was not given the right to face the witnesses against him in open court. Polaveja approved the decision of court martial and ordered Rizal to be shot at 7 o'clock in the morning of December 30 at Bagumbayan Field. Sadlak sa dusan 